Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, a collection of interesting and useful information when building model steam engines and boilers. This is part 16. Some very old models requiring major restoration. Sympathetic restorations of models in bad condition can be quite difficult. The second restoration is not even a steam engine or a boiler. It's a 1903 Bing clockwork train. And this really was in diabolical condition when I got it. I think that I managed to improve it without going over the top, and it still looks quite old after the restoration. I think that is okay because that's what restoration is all about. First though, I'm working on a very old Bassett Loke steam plant with a Stuart S50 engine. Over the years, I've repaired and rebuilt many model steam engines, and I think this one is possibly the worst I've ever seen. The cylinder's loose, but that's fairly common with S50 model engines. The initial problem that I'm looking at is the fact that the flywheel only turns half a revolution and the piston locks up at each end of the stroke. Everything about this engine is horrible. It's quite an old S50, I can see that. I can't see very much for all the filth that covers the engine, the old oil and dust and grime, so I think the first thing to do is going to be to clean it up. That is, after I've chopped off the steam inlet pipe, I don't want this, it's horrible. Before I start, I'm using my vacuum cleaner to vacuum up some of the debris around the engine. And I notice what seems to be a clack valve ball. I don't know where that came from, but the vacuum cleaner's taken care of it anyway. In this clip, I'm removing the overscale elbow. This is far too big, miles overscale. The exhaust pipe is just a piece of threaded copper tubing, and in this clip, I'm removing it from the cylinder. For the initial clean-up, just to see what's under there, I'm using my electric toothbrush. But it's not a good idea to use it dry because it's going to scatter any dust everywhere all over the place. To stop this dust from flying about all over the workbench, I'm spraying the engine with some WD-40, and then it's back to the toothbrush. This toothbrush idea is not my original idea. It was sent in to me by one of my patron supporters by the name of Marek. I've used an ordinary toothbrush for cleaning models for many years but by using an electric toothbrush, it removes the grime much quicker. Here's a top tip. If you're going to use an electric toothbrush for cleaning an engine like this, at least obtain a replacement brush head if you want to clean your teeth with it afterwards. This is only the original clean. I'm going to put it in a bath of cellulose thinners very shortly. And as we all know by now, cellulose thinners is better known as lacquer thinner in the USA. I'm trying to have a look at what I've got to work with, so I'm using a cloth to remove more of the debris, and it's not as bad as it looks. At least all this grime and old oil has protected it, it's not very rusty. Now I've cleaned up the engine a little bit, I can see the slots in the wood screws that hold the engine to the baseboard, so it's time to remove the engine from the baseboard. S50 engines have one mounting lug at one end and two at the other end. Once I've removed this last screw, the engine will be detached from the baseboard. This is the dynamo that's driven by the engine, and it's quite interesting because it's just a big lump of metal with a commercial electric motor in the center. It's a permanent magnet electric motor, so as you rotate it, it will also generate power. As this series progresses, please refer back to this episode to see what I had to start with. This steam plant was partially dismantled, so there's a box full of bits. It will be an interesting project bringing this thing back to life. Time to light the burner and test the boiler. And now everything seems fine. It's been blowing off at 50 pounds per square inch for quite a while and the boiler pressure is not gaining on the safety valve. Time to run the steam engine and find out what speed it needs to run out to generate 6 volts. And it's quite respectable. It's not going too fast and it's not going too slow. And as you can see on the meter, it's showing, well, just under 6 volts at the moment. Restoring a Bing clockwork train. And this is part one, initial examination of the mechanical parts of the engine. I've removed the clockwork mechanism which includes the wheels from the main body of the locomotive. And here it is. This is the main mechanism and it's currently sat in this plastic bowl full of white spirit because it was very dirty indeed. And in this clip, I'm using my toothbrush to get into the more difficult parts. I didn't use cellulose thinners for this job as I only want to remove the grime and the old oil, not the paint. 
This lever at the back stops the cogs from turning, so it's the brake. This lever is the forward and reverse mechanism. For some reason, this mechanism is quite difficult to get hold of. I'll try and demonstrate the forward and reverse just using one hand. The wheel may be wobbly, but the forward and reverse mechanism is very smooth. These are the connecting rods and the coupling rods. And as you can see from this clip, they're not in very good condition at all. The first thing that I'm going to do is take them apart completely and attempt to straighten them using a soft hammer. So here are the parts separated. I'm going to be very careful not to lose the bolts and washers. I'm going to put them in the tender, then I know where they are. In this clip, I've straightened the rods and I'm cleaning them up on a piece of wetted dry sandpaper, but I'm not rubbing them very hard because they're plated. And I don't want to remove any of this plating. For the moment, the coupling rods and the connecting rods can go into the tender with the other parts. I found an easier way of winding up the engine, so here I'm winding it up a bit further. Although it gets harder to wind as you increase the pressure on the spring, so here, once again, I'm reverting back to my Barco spanner. The wheel at this side is OK. The wheel at the other side has sustained some impact damage at some time in its life. That's why it's not running true. There are plenty of points to oil on this engine, and they haven't been oiled for many years, I would think. When I first got this small engine, with its two carriages, I didn't know what it was, so I went on the internet to have a look. But I couldn't find it. I found this one, which is quite similar, but a bit shorter. Many parts of the locomotive's bodywork are either bent, damaged, or lost altogether. And in this clip, using a large pair of pliers, very gently, I'm adjusting the motion bracket, or bending it back into its correct shape. Rebending the cab side was somewhat more difficult, and the only way I could straighten it was to use a bit of force from the inside, and I did this very carefully using a very small hammer. And as you can see, it didn't damage the paintwork much at all. The paintwork was already damaged from the initial impact that bent it in the first place. One of the handrails along the side of the boiler was bent, so I just used my vice-like grip to straighten it. When reprofiling the parts on a model like this, you have to put quite a lot of pressure on some of the parts, but you really do need to be gentle at the same time. Too much pressure will destroy the part. This freshly machined chimney cap isn't going to look good against the rest of the parts of the engine because it's very sort of squeaky clean and newly polished on the polishing spindle. So I'm going to oxidise it slightly, and I'm going to put years of oxidisation on in seconds using a blowtorch. With the magic of video and superimposition, here I've superimposed the original photograph on top of the engine, and I think it looks somewhere near. So that's just about it. Here's a shot of the engine and the carriage on the shelf over the radiator. And I think it's quite an improvement on the way it was originally when I first got it. The interesting thing about this Bing railway engine, which of course is clockwork, is that I can't find a picture of it anywhere on the internet, and I mean anywhere, and I really have looked. I found one that looked quite similar, but it was a good bit shorter, and it's not the same engine as this one, but I worked from a photograph of that one to get the chimney dimensions, because really, the dome and the safety valve look the same as this one, so I assume that the chimney was also going to be the same part. But no, this engine is different. It's definitely an 040, there's no signs of any fittings, for any leading wheels, and the whole locomotive is a good bit longer than the one in the photograph I have of it that I got off the internet. And also, don't forget, this is a gauge three or two and a half inch gauge engine, not an O gauge engine. So if any experts out there know exactly what this is, please let me know, I'm curious to find out. Here's the locomotive as I first got it, devoid of chimney and looking very forlorn. And after my sympathetic restoration, this is what it now looks like. I've quite enjoyed this restoration. It's been something a little bit different. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found it useful.